this video, we want to deepen our understanding of why an externality is a market failure and want to start with the first economic analysis of this problem. So once again, why is an externality, does it, why does it cause a market failure? And here you learn the first, that the first bit of jargon, it is because the agent that causes those externalities, so someone who pollutes the air or someone who pollutes water um, or affects someone's health in, 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 in another way, just to give some examples, that agent, that person or firm does not internalize the costs or benefits of that externality. In other words, if I drive a car that pollutes the air, or if I smoke and other people have to breathe in my smoke, um, that has a cost for them in terms of utility. So their, the, their welfare is lower compared to me not smoking. So their welfare is affected by that, but I don't get charged typically for that that I pollute the air and they don't get compensated. But the, the main thing here is that I don't get charged. So I do not internalize the cost that I impose on others through my behavior. Now there is also a challenge, which is that oftentimes there is actually no price for these externalities, right? So how can I know how much I would have to compensate someone when I smoke? And that person has to breathe in my smoke. Um, you know, what is that person's decrease in utility that that person suffers? What is that worth? It's actually not easy to, to, to estimate or, or to, to put a price tag on. And so th this is obviously what, not necessarily what economists do who work in, in universities. But this is what a lot of economists in either the private sector or in institutes are doing. They are trying to estimate how big the effect of an externality is on different groups, on different participants in the market. But one important or two important lessons from studying externalities, and the two that, that, that you should remember, even if I woke you up at three in the morning, I call you up and you, you, you know, ask you what is the, what are the most important things to remember about an externalities is a competitive equilibrium is not efficient when there are externalities because the people causing these externalities don't internalize the cost first. The second, that surprise, surprise, the actions of agents are not independent. Right? So, so the action of one person, um, even if it affects the other person through like outside of the market, not purely through prices, but outside of the market, um, the, the, the actions of one person typically affects the utility of other people or participants in the market, such as firms. So if you ever read in one of those beautiful columns in, in the Sunday papers that uh, how ignorant are economists because they, they completely ignore that uh, people's decisions and, uh, and, and people's actions are interdependent. I'll just show them the slides uh, of this course and say, well, this is what we're getting taught in third year undergrad. So maybe economists are not all that bad after all. Now, Let's start with an example for a negative consumption external. That's the first step towards an economic analysis. Here. So we look here at the example of smoking and we have two people. Person A is a smoker who smokes S cigarettes or packs of cigarettes. And person B is the, is the person who is a non-smoker and suffers from that externality. Now let's, let's put ourselves in, in the shoes of person A. So if we apply the very classic utility maximization that we've learned in, in lecture two and that you learned in, in intermediate micro, but what does that person do when, when deciding how much to smoke? 
Well, they weigh their private benefits they get, their private marginal benefits from smoking another cigarette, um, against the private marginal cost. And they smoke as many cigarettes, or the, the number of cigarettes they eventually smoke, the optimal number for them to maximize their utility is given where those two are the same. The marginal cost of smoking another cigarette equals the marginal benefit. If the marginal benefit is higher, then it's actually beneficial to smoke more because the pleasure they get from smoking another cigarette is higher than the cost. If the marginal cost is higher than the marginal benefit, then they should smoke less because the cost of an additional cigarette is greater than the additional pleasure there. But the, the, the most important thing is here that the utility maximizing smoker, um, even if that person may be addicted, but if they're utility maximizers, they only care about their own pleasure they get from smoking and their own costs. But what that ignores, obviously, is that there is a negative externality that smoking exerts on the other person. Because for agent B, the marginal benefit of an additional smoke that is smoked by person A is actually negative. Right? If I'm person B, if I'm the non-smoker, which I am, um, if someone else smokes in my vicinity, um, that decreases my enjoyment of whatever I'm doing and may have health consequences. So, and that this interdependency here creates a discrepancy between the private optimum, so the one whereby person A's utility is maximized, and the social optimum, which is the optimum across both people in that society, A and B. And because the social optimum, as it was, as we learned it with public goods, is defined by this condition down here, which is the marginal cost of one more of consuming one more unit, in this case one more cigarette, has to equal the social marginal benefit. That's what a social planner would choose. And so you can already imagine where this is heading. If, the, if A doesn't internalize the negative externality, in plain English, if A doesn't have to pay a price for the, the damage they do to, to person B, they will simply smoke more than they otherwise would. So here is the very simple economic analysis. So again, for simplicity, we assume here that the marginal cost of smoking an additional cigarette, the cost of smoking an additional cigarette is constant. Okay? So it's just a horizontal line. Now, those two downward sloping curves, which are demand curves, and demand curves give you the, uh, the, 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 marginal, the marginal benefit, um, those reflect respectively the private marginal benefit and the social marginal benefit. And let's start with the private marginal benefit, which is the, the curve out here, the, the one I've, I've traced here um, in a slightly non-straight fashion. Um, that is the marginal benefit curve for person A, for the smoke. But remember that for the other person, the smoke of person A had a negative effect, so reduced their marginal benefit. So if we look at it from a social perspective, if we, if we add those two marginal benefits up, the marginal benefit of the smoker plus basically the marginal damage from the, uh, from, for the non-smoker, so M MBB here, which is negative, we arrive at this dashed line. And it's easy to see here that the optimal amounts of, uh, of consumption are very different. If we just leave it to the market to sort things out, the smoker will smoke too much. Why does 
Why do they smoke too much? Well, they smoke more than what is socially optimal because they don't take into account that other people are actually suffering from, from the fact that they smoke. Okay? So the optimal, the socially optimal amount will be low. Now, interestingly here, the socially optimal amount is not zero in this example. It's just less because the, the socially optimal amount depends both on the amount of damage the smoke creates to the non-smoker as well as the amount of pleasure it creates to the smoke for the smoker. And so the, the two of them taken together do not necessarily need to result in, in an optimal amount of zero. And we will encounter this over and over again. You know, also when you think about production externalities, think about pollution, it's not necessarily efficient to have no production at all. Right? Imagine our life if we had to, from one day to another, stop any production that, that burns fossil fuels. Our life would be miserable unless there was a long transition period where we could invest in new technologies. And so, but, but, but if we had to do this from one day to another, um, this would not, be, would not be efficient because our, you know, our life would just look very differently. I'm sorry, it would look very different um, if, if, if that was the case. Okay? But bottom line here is with an externality that is a market failure, we typically have, if it's a negative externality, overproduction or overconsumption. If it's a positive externality, we will see that we have the opposite.